Okay, and everything's back up and running again. Now, um, hmm. First thing I wanted to do was take care of some of the things I missed, which was the bathrooms. Again, uh, I completely missed the input pipe on that. And the embarrassing thing is I record these quite a bit in advance. My editing skills are pretty weak, so oh, I'm also going to rip out some more bris bristle blossoms as well. My calories are going up too much, and that's just it's just wasting water. Um, also, as well as that, I'm going to want to change consumables because I missed raw meat. My duplicates are still eating raw meat. I would rather save that up for barbecue. It gives me more calories. Uh, also want to get some of the uh, odorizer down here so I can start stopping that polluted oxygen from accumulating. Um, I'm also going to want another one over. Oh, he's working on that. Excellent. This is just to prevent any of that nasty polluted oxygen getting out. It's only going to cause stress at worst, and my duplicates are already pretty good at avoiding stress, so that should be fine. And uh, next up, mm, uh, power to this. Now, this is a self powered ox uh, oxygen maker, so we shouldn't actually need any power going to this, so we are just going to just deconstruct these power wires. That does not need power anymore. Uh, as well as that, I want to get some more oxygen. Uh, diffusion going on, so we're going to install a few extra gas vents. We've got one down there, and I want to put a few in the corridors here, especially one here, and then another one there. There's close enough. And that should hopefully help with getting the oxygen out into the rest of the area. Uh, I realized I'd ripped all the oxygen providers out of here, so this was going to start becoming a problem as the oxygen was consumed. Now, uh, next up, we're going to put in a second ranch. Oh, actually, no. You want to take care of the hydrogen problem. The hydrogen is only going to keep building up in this tank. I don't want that. So, next up, gas pipe. Insulated gas pipe. The hydrogen is going to be coming out at 70 degrees. Don't want that dumping any heat into my base. Now, we're going to put in some storage tanks for the hydrogen. Uh, we're going to go with gold amalgam. We may end up sealing off this area, so why not make sure that it's not going to be a problem. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is I want to actually store up all the excess hydrogen here and then burn some of it off in generators. The generators I'm actually going to feed onto my main grid, as in the two grids over there. But I'm going to have to feed them in through the transformers to stop, you know, overflow power problems, that kind of thing. So let's grab a couple of hydrogen generators. Yeah, I'm also going to hook them up to smart batteries so that they're the first things to activate. Are we looking on ores? Uh, we still got more copper than anything else. Uh, let's grab a couple of tons of more. And now I'll fast forward this a bit while the dupes catch up. Actually, no, it's a bad idea. Um, one of the things I forgot to cover early on was why I reduced the schedules to two bedtime slots. The reason I did that is when a dupe goes to bed, once they're in bed, they will not wake up again unless you manually click on them, as in they will stay in bed until their stamina has completely recovered. Duplicant stamina decreases throughout the day, and once it hits zero, they will fall asleep no matter where they are. Also, if you tell them to go to bed, once they're in bed, they won't get out of bed until their stamina hits 100%. So, if you have three bedtime slots, they can end up going to bed, completely recovering their stamina, for example, that duplicate there has now recovered all their stamina and could actually wake up right now and go about their daily duties. And they do. If you give them three bedtime slots, they would have stayed an extra slot just doing nothing. No point doing that. Waste. It's just a pure waste. So we're going to grab more of this lovely copper up here. No, I should have got around to that earlier. OK, 
Okay, and oh, we have another possible duplicate. Wait, I'm going to need more beds. Unconstructive, no thank you. Narcoleptic, double no thank you. Unconstructive, also no thank you. We will go with the gold amalgam. Oh, yes, when you reload the game, anything that was stored up in the gate is actually reset. I forgot about that. So even if you have something you're waiting for and you're like, oh, I'll grab that later, the moment you reload the game, this will be reset to something random. Just something to be aware of. Now, I want to make sure I have more water for my water tank when the time comes. So I'm going to play some level six dig commands here. And this just means dig dope will take care of it. Okay, and done. Dig dog can now wear exosuits. Excellent. Tinker dog, you can Okay, once the last of this hydrogen issue is taken care of, uh, let's see how the hydrogen is actually looking. Still not. Okay, we've got. Now, what I want to do here is get all the gas out of this tank and dump it into the three I've got further down the line. I don't want this gas tank jamming up my uh, my hallway. As you can see, even though this is disconnected from the mains power, it's still producing enough hydrogen to power itself and producing excess hydrogen. And this little pipe here is just acting as the buffer. I used to use these gas tanks as a buffer, but I realized you don't actually need that much of a buffer. A small buffer this long is plenty to actually provide you with enough hydrogen that this will uh, always remain up and running and stable. And as we can see, all the gas pipes are starting to fill up back there and it's now completely saturated the top half of our base. Bottom half, still catching up. It'll get around to it. Since this is dumping cold oxygen in, it's helping chill down our base, especially up here where it's quite nice because we have bristle blossoms and they're now nice and cool. I'm putting in separate smart batteries for these. A little bit of extra heat, but it does allow me to turn these on first. And only the coal generators would only kick in after if all the hydrogen is gone. Oops, I made all these wires out of iron, so they have to go all the way over to the iron section, which is somewhere way over here to get all the iron. Oops. Yeah, the batteries over here are set to 1940, so we are going to set these to something uh, slightly different. Uh, so you want you to come at 60%. The battery hits 60%, you're going to kick in. That means we're going to preferentially burn the hydrogen. This just ensures that the hydrogen never backs up in the system and causes me problem with my ox problems with my oxygen supply. Okay. Well, we're just going to fast forward time a bit here and wait until all this wiring is all done. And we've got another point for Dog's Body because they are one of the hardest working dupes we've got access to. Okay, Dog's Body out this time. Okay, we'll give you improved carrying too. We're going to get you into exosuit training really quickly. Now, we are going to want another hatchery. Uh, yeah, you want to stay ahead of these. If you end up falling behind, you'll come back and realize you've got everything full and you didn't get that station down in time.
and boom, fourth hatchery down. Now, once this, once we've got enough stone hatches, I'm going to well, basically let all these regular hatches die out. They'll eventually die of old age, at which point I will replace them with stone hatches. In fact, I can do that now by selecting stone hatches and stone hatchlings. In fact, I don't think I've copied the stone hatch. Stone hatch, stone hatching, perfect, yes. Done. Now, we have everything else sorted. That's ready to be dropped into the tank. Actually, we can drop that now. We have plenty of oxygen coming in. Next up, we want to get more bedrooms and possibly another dining hall in as well. We want to increase the amount of duplicates we can possibly manage. Hmm. I'm going to have to sweep that. <laughs> That's the problem with sometimes building up. I can't actually deconstruct these and let them fall down here. It's just going to cause more gunk on this floor. And I can't really keep dropping it. I'm not going to deconstruct everything again. Now, this is where, we're going to, where we are going to put the last of our bedrooms. Uh, oxide fertilizer, uh, narcoleptic iron gut. Mm, research art and tidy, no thank you. Pacifist, interior decorator, build, mm, care. Build and research, okay, they're actually pretty good. Hmm. One second. Okay, you can be Dig Dug 2. Okay, Dig Dug 2. We're going on schedule number three. Oh, you need an extra piece of downtime. That bath time, I think you can actually remove it. Uh, I don't have any showers in yet, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to get them. It depends on how the game goes. But if they're not actually any showers available, they'll just start working. So it's pretty much not really a problem to leave it in there for now. Oh, and we're also going to want to set up your skills. On your skills, your uh, priorities. Dig dug two. Build and dig, that's it. Now... You've got a bedroom, and we have a dining hall up and running for you as well, and we'll just want to extend that ladder up slightly. At the same time, I just want to clean out this floor and get it ready for turning it into a bedroom later on. Oops. I want to be using sandstone for these. Okay, this top-down cleaning may seem a little bit excessive, but it definitely helps get you to uh, clean up. The problem is you can spend dozens of cycles actually cleaning up your base and getting all this gunk into one spot. You're better off just dropping it and using gravity to help you out. Your dupes can build and construct, well, deconstruct and construct faster than they can actually sweep, especially early on. Later on, once you've got the, you've maxed out some of the, the gophering skills, yes, then they become much more potent at it. But until that point, you're better off dropping it through the floor, letting gravity be your friend. Now. Yeah, close enough. Now, I have not been concentrating on decor at all. The reason for that is the way decor works is it's an exposure over the entire day. It's an average of the entire day. So you see there that you'll see their current environmental decor and average decor this cycle, average decor last cycle. This one has 
minus 18 from the last cycle. So if we check out morale, you can see dividend washroom barracks, last cycle, poor meal. Hmm. There's no actual mention of ah, decor, last cycle's decor, mediocre, plus one. So basically, so long as their decor isn't too horrible, uh, as in lower than minus 18 or 20, they'll still get plus one morale from decor. However, if you want them to get any decent decor, you have to expose them over a long period of time. And even if they are exposed to the worst decor possible, and they're exposed to it constantly all day long, the worst that'll happen to them is they'll have minus one happiness or minus one morale. You can't actually get any worse than minus one morale from decor. However, getting higher than one or two morale from decor is really hard without actually just stripping, ripping up the whole map and putting in furniture. Uh, which reminds me, we are going to start sticking in some large sculpting blocks. Now, I'll go over in a minute why large sculpting blocks are probably the best decor item you can possibly get your hands on. But for now, I'm just going to stick them in everywhere where it seems like they're necessary, which is basically all the main living areas. Okay. While they're getting around to that, I'm going to actually hop over to a, another save I have that'll show you why decor is so important. All right, so here we are on my decor test map. Now, right here is all the decor from, uh, well, a dupe who's only got one skill in art, art fundamentals. So this is the kind of artwork they'll produce, and it's pretty weak sauce. Uh, for example, here's a crude sculpture. All this stuff is pretty terrible. There's a medium artist, and then up here is the only one we're interested in, which is masterwork. Namely because you don't have to redo these things again. They're a little bit time consuming. So regular statue gives 20, a uh, small little sculpture gives 24 decor. A large one gives 30. Uh, actually, I should point out a big difference between these two. This one has a radius of only four tiles. So while it does seem it's one tile shorter, takes up one tile less space than the genius sculpture, it only reaches half the distance. This one reaches eight tiles and gives 30 decor. Uh, this one is genius marble statue giant, the giant marble blocks. These ones also reach eight tiles, but they only give 42 decor and they're, they take up twice the space. Uh, paintings give 30, 30 decor with six tiles. The larger paintings, doesn't matter which one orientation they're in, they give 36 decor with a radius of six tiles. Now, I recommend using lots and lots of granite statues. Namely because these paintings, they cost reed fiber to make and gold amalgam if you want to get decent ones. These ones just cost granite. It's dirt cheap and it's available everywhere. And if you'll notice here, this gives plus 60 decor to anything pretty much beside it. And just up to about, how many tiles is that? So for about seven tiles, you're looking at 60 decor. And then for this eighth tile, you'll get 30. So if we look at say a painting like this that takes up the exact same amount of space, this only gives 36 decor, and it goes out exactly to six tiles, which means it's giving less decor, takes up the same space, gives up less decor, and it's just pretty much all around worse. Then we've got giant st marble statues. They're great, they give 42 decor, and they will go out to full eight tiles. However, that means anyone here, if there was two, if that was actually two marble statues, we'd be getting 60 decor out to here, and then the last slice would only be 30. So we're losing out on, what, 12 decor points on the last tile of the uh, overlap? But we're, in, in all the middle ones, we're losing out on, well, 18 points of decor that could be assigned. And when it comes to duplicates, we'll check out this one here. They have this decor option thing or this decor meter, you'll see here their decor was last cycle 187. If their decor is 120 or higher, they will get plus 12 morale. So if you look down there at the bottom of all those pluses, you'll see last cycle's decor gorgeous plus 12. So if we can get their average decor exposure over the entire day up to 120, it's plus 12 morale. So the usual theory is decor bombing, which is where you put in lots and lots of decor around the areas they will always be in at some point during the day. Bedrooms, bathrooms, and dining hall. You cram those areas with decor, and you can usually expose them to about four or 500 pieces of decor per second, and it usually counteracts any negative decor they encounter during their day. Now, one last thing, minus decor does nothing. Well, minus decor will give you minus one, but that's the worst it can be. So you can have a little bit of debris, or you can have the whole map covered in debris and have lots of power cables everywhere still only minus one morale. 
So the, the point being early on getting decor is useless until you can actually take care of all the negative decor around the map. And you can decor bomb strong enough to overpower all the negative decor, which is why I hold out until this point before I even think about getting into it. Okay, let's see what all the dupes have been up to while we've been uh, exploring our other decor factory. Now I'm going to actually rip out some of these tables down here. I want to put in four sculptures right beside them. The reason being all those extra sculptures just, it, it stacks up better in this area. Uh, I've tried using this many, but it just doesn't quite provide as much decor as I'm interested in. So this allows me to support about six per dining hall or six per great hall, whatever you want to look at it. But that's 12 duplicates I can support on these two dining halls. And I'll put a third one up here in a bit, which will get me up to, well, the required amount. More statues. Also rip out those in a minute and we're going to put in one more dining hall. I'm just trying to get all the infrastructure out of the way for when we're really going to cram out uh, lots of duplicates. Furniture. Okay, now that's looking pretty good. Uh, how's our oxygen supply looking? Oh, okay, that was... Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be that tight in the tank. If I had known, I would have made it slightly larger. Oh, uh, Paku fish have this great tendency to actually go down, and that one actually managed to survive by flopping all the way down this tube in here. It's quite handy. You can usually keep a couple of Paku fish alive that way. Now we have a nice tank of polluted water. That's going to feed into our oxygen maker, which means we never are going to have to worry about water for a while. Or, um, well, polluted water for a while. Now, what is going on here? Why is that not outputting? No gas intake, any. Yeah, one moment. Oh. There's no actual gas intake, so this won't output, which is one of those weird little quirks you keep forgetting about. So I actually have to put a bridge here to create flow. Then what I do is I send the gas pipe into the input nozzle here, and that should hopefully start that spitting out hydrogen. Now I've bridged it on this way. Uh, think of these nozzles like uh, the white one sucks in gas and the green one spits it out. So this will suck in the gas that comes out of here, dump it across this bridge, and this one will spit it out this side, only so long as there's no other gas here. So this is basically, uh, this flow through here has priority. This one will dump in on top of it. And now that that's done, I want to see about actually hooking up this anti-entropy nullifier. I'm going to want to actually get chilled going on down here because this will eventually melt this biome if I'm not careful. Also, I'm going to want to rip out some of the infrastructure I put in here. But that will probably be for a later video. For the moment, I want to have a quick look at the skill points. And that will probably be the end of this. It's been mostly just cleaning up the mess from the last one. Okay, Dig Dug, how are you doing? You are perfect. We're going to put you in exosuit training. Now, you will notice that uh, only one duplicate is actually taking care of the art. That is Art Dug down here, because that's their job. No one else is going to touch any of these statues. They'll build and construct, but Art Dug won't anymore. Uh, if you look at the priority system, he's already he's got the highest priority on art and build and dig are well a chunk behind, which means he will only do art first. So he's going to continue doing all these art statues until they're all done. No one else will touch them. They'll go around and build everything else, which is exactly what we want. Uh, this will also result in their creativity going up. They're already at eleven. Wow, actually that's pretty good. They'll become a. They'll be quite fast at it, and they'll be wasting the least amount of time constructing the statues. If you get other people into art to help out. Well, for one thing, you'd have to actually crank them up to level three artistry before they could do the same level of statues. So you're better off getting a specialist and getting them to do it. You can maybe get in a second one later if you really want, but usually once you've decor bombed your starting area, you, you don't really care. Now, well, that's all going on. I am also going to put in some planter pots. Sloppy. Okay, let me think about this for a second. Hmm. Okay, Otto is going to be coming joining the fold. They're going to be Tinker. 
Tinker Doug. I can't remember if I'm on two or three at this point. Uh, we'll call them three. We can always rename them if uh, we already have we only have two Tinker Dugs. Uh, scheduling. Perfect. Okay, and I think we'll call it a day at that one. So we've got our oxygen sorted. We've got our decor coming up and running. It's time to get into exosuits. We are going to probably crack out this direction. Uh, if my ice biome was the other side, I would have cracked out this direction. Uh, I just would have meant I would have put in the stable the opposite side. Uh, system, this build that I use, it's pretty much my default go-to. It's easy to manage, it's simple to it's simple to work. All you have to do is avoid the early water pockets and get up to, well, the basics. Now, these uh, gris bristle blossoms, okay, my calories are still going up. I'm going to have to dig up some more of these. Uh, we'll get another three of those out of the way. These bristle blossoms are only temporary. Once all our hatches are online, we're probably going to switch over to mostly meat and eggs. And if we check in here, do we have any meat yet? No, we haven't actually found any meat in a while. Uh, that's cracked. One last check. Oh, we have more stone hatches. Yep. Looking, Everything's looking well on the way to stability. And once we get out this door here, we're going to, well, dismantle this entire slime biome. Namely, I just want the polluted water. I want to make a polluted water pit so that I don't have to worry about oxygen for a long time to come. Uh, as well as... Oh, okay, but we do have a lot of polluted water right now. But I'll probably stockpile some more water. I'm paranoid about ever running out of oxygen. If you've ever run out of oxygen, you know that feeling. Uh, the next thing we're going to do after we stockpile some of that water is we are going to dig straight down to the oil biome and get right into oil and industry. Because getting an industrial break up and running and cranking out steel is what we really want to do. And I also might want to check out some what some of these vents and geysers are around the map. There was one down here. Uh, I'll need exosuits to get to that one. I'm also going to need exosuits to get to that one. The slime biome and the uh, slime lung is actually pretty annoying currently in the current patch. And I can actually get to that one without going through... Actually, I'll check that one out. I can get through to that one without actually building anything. And we'll go to there. And we'll have you go up here. That's right there. Actually, I can't even see high enough to do the rest of that digging. Okay. Perfect. Oh, and we're going to need some oxygen for that person to actually get there. So we'll just dump an oxygen vent there. Anyway, okay, I'm getting too distracted. Yeah, I'll pause it here. Uh, I'll try and get these episodes up faster. I'm using new recording software, so hopefully I can get them out in a more timely fashion. Anyway, enjoy.